Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. So Tom, you just have to watch and learn from the master. Best thing to do in a situation like this is drink your coffee. Make sure you keep it back out of the way so it doesn't get flakes of the call in it. And watch. There's a dent back here, and I thought about it, and thought, well, I could put some heat on that dent and push it out. And I also thought, well, I could fill it in. But there's a protrusion here. This has been dented for so long, I'm afraid if I heat it up enough to pop that dent out, I'm going to crack this thing. And then I'm going to have a whole nother thing of recovery. So I'm just going to paint it and say that dent is there as part of the mystique of being an old outboard. And it shows the life that it led. I'm sure it's there because the handle is on that end. And when you pick the thing up, the motor tends to tip down and the prop comes up. So it kind of hangs level in your hand. That's where the, mo the handle balances at. And I bet when they set it down, they bump something. Or as it was being traveled around, it sits on a couple of legs back here. And I bet that ran up against something. Slid around in the back of the truck or something. But in any case, I'm not going to replace or repair that dent. I'm just going to let that go. Right, Tom? Tom agrees. It's the best thing to do. Okay, now I have it sanded. I have to go over and scuff up the whole thing. I bought this at an estate sale. It says economy sandpaper. It has a different meaning when it's uh, sandpaper that you get from Norton and it's Bear Brand. Bear Brand is a good brand of sandpaper. Norton is a good company for making sandpaper. If you go to Harbor Freight and buy economy sandpaper you're going to get something that pretty much has the sand falling off of it faster than you can put it back on. I'm going to use a piece of this 220 because they don't need to take off any great deal of material. I just want to scuff up the outside surface. Give the paint something to hook on. Brief interruption to replace the camera batteries. Where were we? Ah! Sandpaper and scuffing. When you go to the paint store or hardware store or one of the big box stores and buy paint. You know, Lowe's, Menards. Home Depot. Home Depot is like 14 miles from here, so I don't go there very often. But whenever you go there, they have paintster sticks. The big box stores, they don't hand them out as much. They used to hand out yard sticks. They stopped doing that. Evidently, yard sticks became something noticeable in the accounting department and they said, oh, I can't do that anymore. It's costing too much money. When you go to the lumber yard, you can buy a yard stick. Now, a yard stick is a wooden stick with inches or millimeters printed on it. 
accuracy is, you know, like close. Not good. They charge you for it. It's a tool, and they can charge you for it and make money. It used to be something that just you went to the lumber yard, you got your wood, and you met with Joe or Sam or Pete, whoever it was at your lumber yard, that always took care of you. I used to like to go to leg lumber and cold water. Because when you went in and said, I need a piece of wood to do whatever, they would offer suggestions. They would say, oh, well, this is, if you are going to be making something that's going to be getting wet occasionally, then maple is a good one because it's dense and somewhat water resistant. Teak's best, but we don't have any teak. You can order it for you, but we don't normally carry teak because not many people buy it. They don't have it. If they had it, I suppose they'd sell more of it. But, you know, it's expensive and hard to keep in stock in the sizes that everybody wants. They have a big investment in wood. Just saying, okay, we're gonna have two by fours, two by sixes, two by eights, two by ten of white pine. And then if you want more expensive ones, we'll sell you Doug fir. But that means they have to have them sitting on site waiting for somebody to come get them. And if nobody buys Doug fir, pretty soon you go to the lumber yard and they haven't replaced their stock because you know, nobody's buying this stuff. They look at his dollar bill sitting there in a rack that they can't use. They can market them, I suppose, and tell people, yeah, come over to Economy Lumber here in wherever and get your teak because we have teak. Well, that's okay if you live next to a boating community like Gull Lake in Richland. People with those kind of boats like to have teak so that they can do repairs. But Gull Lake is not hard on boats. I mean, it's, it's sunlight. But other than that, big waves, and nah, the lake's too small. You're not going to have huge crashes. You're not going to have people losing wood trim in a storm. So anyway, not much point. So you end up with the big box store that says, oh, we have all these things. You can go into Menards and buy oak and laminates and even a little bit of teak if you want. Expensive as they can, but you can get it there. Because they have it, they sell it. They get a lot more traffic because they're a big store and they sell all kinds of things. You go in there for beans and come home with a piece of teeth. Back to the original topic that I started on before I began rambling. I had to make a phone call this morning and tell them that I wanted a letter saying that I had insurance with them. And they said, oh, we can email we can mail it to you, but we can't email it. Because for some reason they can't. I don't know what the thinking is behind it. Oh, we can't email it. We can't give you proof. In an email, we can send it to you in a letter. So what I'll do, I'll get the letter in the mail, snail mail, which means it takes seven days to get here. And I have to make sure they got the right address. I had to have them look and verify that the address I gave them was the correct one. 
because when I signed up for their insurance, I gave them an address. But that means 25 people have entered it into different databases and who knows if they did it right. So I gave them the right address and they verified that it was the right address on their system and that they would send me a letter in seven days. So in seven days, I'll get a letter. I'll scan it and email it to the insurance company that I'm getting the insurance, new insurance from. I'm emailing it to their representative, my agent. Their agent actually it doesn't work for me. I pay her by paying the company who pays her. So what the heck? Still, she works for them. She doesn't work for me. It's very nice. Seems to be doing a fair job. I haven't had her do a whole lot of insurance for me, but seems to be mostly on the up and up, which is close as you're going to get these days. You understand all that that I've been telling you, Tom? I know, you're not going to retire ever. Your position as apprentice here is assured for the rest of eternity. Because once I hire somebody, I don't fire them. But you will be an apprentice up until the point where you pass your journeyman's exam, which means you have to make a project and I have to approve it and show that you've learned all the skills that I teach, which means you've got a real hard time because I teach all kinds of things. You're going to have to prove that you're a carpenter and an electrician. welder and a plumber and a painter but it won't be hard all you have to do is convince me that you want me and that you put the effort in and you learned and paid attention not hard Taught a lot of apprentices. Okay, it's all sanded. Now with a bit of acetone on a rag and we should be good to go. For that I'm going to move Thomas out of the way because I don't want to get acetone on Thomas. It's really hard on your skin and I have rubber gloves but I don't have a rubber cover for Thomas. Also I have to move my coffee out of the way because I don't want to drink acetone at any point in my life. Thomas, you sit here and edit for a, a little bit. I'm late the mysteries of the picture on the screen. And I will be right back.
I bought a box of nine mil gloves oh, three, four years ago and liked them. I bought them at Harbor Freight. They were inexpensive and they actually worked really well. And it, good. Now, the last gloves I bought are seven mil because they don't have nine mils anymore. Seems that when COVID hit, Harbor Freight said they donated all their gloves to the local uh, frontline health practitioners. I don't know that they donated them. I'm sure they got paid in some way. But when I went back to buy 9 mil gloves, they said they didn't have any. And weren't likely to get any for a while. So I ended up buying these seven mil gloves, which are blue in color, not black. The black ones were the nine mils. These are blue. I guess it's so that you can tell the difference. I don't know how well these seven mil are going to do, but we're going to find out. I always buy extra large gloves because I don't have big hands. But it seems that gloves being made in China are for Chinese people with small hands. I have big hands compared to a Chinese person, I guess. The average Chinese person. I'm sure there are people in China with bigger hands than mine. Because in the United States, my hands would be considered somewhat small. I have short fingers. Big palms, short fingers. Not sure why that is. Must be something in my genetic makeup makes it that way. They seem to work quite well. Now, I don't think this is going to take a lot of acetone. Wipe off the chalk where the sun has damaged the plastic. And there. Now we're ready for paint. Advanced Formula Gloss Protective Enamel. 30% greater corrosion resistance with a high output tip. Still haven't found that spray gun. There, all nicely white. A couple of whoop de doos over here in the corner, but this side looks good. Now let that sit and dry. Come back down, give it another coat. So this job is done. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. 
Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or legal guardians of the underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.